So many power codes, 90% of them, when they're being discarded, they still work. And this is the same fate that so many other electrical components have. Yeah, and it may seem like such a small thing, right? But if you take into account that uh, yearly 57 million tons of e-waste is being created, and that 2% are cables, then that's a pretty significant amount. In general, we, we see that the, the cable is being stripped for its copper core, mm -hmm. but uh, what we're left with is this like insulation, but also the plugs on both ends of the cable. So we end up just uh, burning or uh, landfilling both of these components. So why are we throwing away cables and remanufacturing cables that are exactly identical? We thought of what can we do to, to put these power cords that are perfectly fine back in the loop? Yeah, so we imagine these uh, testing stations where the power cord is visually checked if the insulation has any faults, um, but also electronically checked for open circuits and mm -hmm. short circuits. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the, the three main tests that have to be done yeah. to see if this, um, this power cord is eligible for a second life. And then we can already package it and um, send it off to a local store where it can be sold again. Yeah. And um, we, we imagine these test stations at uh, local e-waste recyclers. Yeah, which is super good because there's no extra work or transportation. Yeah, and I think it's also quite interesting because the resale of these power codes could pose an additional source of income for these e-waste recyclers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a small change. Right, but uh, we see it more of an attitude uh, of how to deal with electrical components.